Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video I have a huge announcement as you saw in the thumbnail and title of this video. We're, We're having, having a, a baby! baby. <laughs> I don't even know how to start this video, but as you saw in the intro, my husband and I are having a baby. By the end of this video, you will know the baby's gender, you will know the baby's name, I plan to tell you everything, so please stay tuned if you're interested in this very major life update. This is a let's get glam type video, but I want to focus on telling you everything that has been happening in my life for the past few months. And so I'm not going to be mentioning products one by one. I will leave you a very detailed list of everything I applied to my face today down below in the description box with the links and everything. So if you're curious about anything I'm using, the list is down below. I'm so nervous to talk about this for some reason. I am not someone to keep secrets at all whatsoever. I am an open book. My family and close friends have known pretty much since I have known. <laughs> because as I said, I just can't keep big secrets like that um, but I haven't wanted to say anything on social media until I was further along and, and so today being week 20 day one it feels like the right time so we are officially halfway there <laughs> we have a due date of June 1st that is the 40 week mark for me so I have been pregnant since September back in September I did not know <laughs> I actually found out a little bit late because me being pretty regular, I don't tend to keep track of the exact days of my cycle because I just know it's coming. Usually when I have kept track of it, it comes even before it's supposed to come, okay? So me being fairly regular, I had not been keeping track of um, my period. If you guys remember when I went to New York, which was at the very end of September, I think it was around September 29th to 30th, I remember I took um, tampons with me just because I thought that around there might be when I get my period and it never came. But then I just kept waiting because I wasn't sure when my last period was. Plus I kept feeling symptoms that in my mind were symptoms of I'm getting my period soon, right? Like my breasts were sore and all of that. And so after another week and a half after I came back from New York, I was like, okay, let's actually take this seriously. <laughs> let's go buy a pregnancy test because I think this might be it. And so my husband and I went to buy my first pregnancy test ever <laughs> together and I took it that same night. I was reading you were supposed to like wait till the morning time and whatnot. No patience. Me? No patience. I took it that same night we bought it and it immediately came back positive. Like the positive line was there before the regular line that's always there was even there. <laughs> um, so I took another pregnancy test in the morning just to make sure and sure enough um, it was positive. So I then started doing my calculations. I thought I was probably like six weeks pregnant and we made an appointment to get an ultrasound to confirm. Once we went to that ultrasound, it turned out I was seven weeks along, and so that's when I found out, kind of in the first half of October, I would think. As far as first trimester symptoms, which I have heard horror stories about, right? I can actually tell you I can consider myself very lucky throughout this whole process so far. Because yes, I had a few days during the first trimester, especially around weeks 10 to 12, I think it probably was, that I was fully drained. I would wake up and my battery was at its lowest, okay? I could not get up from the couch. I could not come up here and film. I could not edit a video. I was like a couch potato the whole day. I had no desire to do absolutely anything. And I just allowed myself to not do anything during those days. Thankfully, I probably had at most a handful of those very drained days and for the most part I could function. As far as nausea and throwing up and all of that good stuff, I can also count myself very, very lucky. I had a ton of gagging that was happening during my pregnancy, especially whenever my stomach was empty, I would start gagging for no reason. But as soon as I ate something, it could be a cracker, a piece of bread, whatever it was, especially in the mornings, as soon as I ate something, those gagging symptoms would go away. And I think I ended up actually puking like four to five times. 
and only once did I have something in my stomach that I actually puked out because like I said the gagging always came when my stomach was empty and so whenever it did get to like actually throwing up there wasn't much coming out you know which is arguably nastier <laughs> um, but as I said I can count myself lucky that I probably ended up actually throwing up a handful of times at most and um, in comparison to the stories that I have heard I consider myself very very lucky as far as the gender is concerned I'll definitely let you know what it is a little bit further along throughout this video but I'll let you know that based on like midwives tales right is that what we call them um, like the little superstition things of like boys versus girls in the belly <laughs> I was certain it was a boy because during the first ultrasound it moved a lot it was having a party in there moving arms moving everything I'll have a little clip right here from that ultrasound to show you it was moving a lot right and so not just me everyone I showed that little clip to was like it's definitely a boy it's moving a lot blah 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 girls have less energy whatever and so most people were team boy <laughs> and besides that I kept hearing that boys give their moms a lot less nausea and an easier first trimester which again I'm not sure if that's true or not that was just things I was reading online and because I had a fairly easy first trimester that also told me that it was a boy <laughs> as far as what we wanted gender wise I honestly could not care less I could see positives to both genders in my mind they weighted equally like I truly did not have a preference a lot of people told me I was just saying that but I honestly did not have a preference I felt like girls sometimes are a little bit easier to deal with because boys tend to be a little bit more wild right so for that reason I wanted a girl but with the same weight and at the same time I feel like boys love their moms so so much and so I wanted a mama's boy right <laughs> and so for that reason then I wanted a boy so I was very very torn in between girl and boy I did not have a preference I was going to be happy either way my husband on the other hand was definitely very very sure he wanted a girl when I showed little pictures of the ultrasound to people most people said it was definitely going to be a boy my dad said he was certain it was going to be a girl. My mom thought it was going to be a boy. My stepmom thought it was going to be a boy. And so around the 10 to 12 week mark, I think it was probably at 12 weeks, I took that blood test that tells you um, the gender early because as I said at the beginning, me, no patience I needed to know right away and so that was actually right before Thanksgiving and the holiday weekend made that test take so freaking long it said it was going to take around 10 business days I had plans to do a little cut a cake gender reveal thing probably around Thanksgiving because I had friends over and whatnot but we did not know the gender around Thanksgiving yet <laughs> And furthermore, I didn't get my test results from that blood test till like probably mid-December. It took a very long time, definitely a lot longer than I expected. And so by the time that I got note that the test results were back, I was like desperate to know the gender, okay? I, again, no patience <laughs> when it comes to like finding out things, especially because I do have patience when it comes to like teaching and things like that but when it comes to like finding out something no patience anyways so by the time the test results came back I already knew I did not want like a gender reveal party with like people and things like that because I don't like parties I don't I'm not a party person I'm already very anxious about the baby shower <laughs> I have not celebrated a birthday with a party since I was 10 years old and that was because my mom used to force me to celebrate my birthdays with parties I am NOT a party person okay at all whatsoever so I already knew I didn't want a like big gender reveal thing I just don't like to be the center of attention if that makes sense and so my idea was to like have a friend 
know the gender, have a friend order a cake and we would just cut it at home, but it just took so long, I just stopped seeing the point of that either. So the moment I found out that my test results were back, I told the nurse to just let me know what it was through an email and my husband and I opened it together. <laughs> Once we opened that email, sure enough, to my surprise and my husband's bliss, <laughs> it is a girl that we're having. We're having a baby girl in a few months. At this point, I'm still feeling very unprepared and very overwhelmed. Um, we need to paint her room. We need to get a closet system for her room. We need to get everything baby-wise, but I guess that was what the baby shower is for, right? Like for people to like help you out with things but I just wish I had everything already <laughs> even though I know I'm only halfway there and we still have quite a few months to go and so let me tell you what I've been up to since the year started some of you might have seen I went to Cuba last week the reason I went to Cuba last week is first of all because I hadn't been in a long time I had to go see my mom and my aunts and my cousins I hadn't seen them for longer than I'd like to admit to myself Right now is the time because unfortunately the healthcare system in Cuba is completely collapsed. They have no medicines or anything like that and they have a lot of mosquito transmitted diseases. I forgot the name of it in English but in Spanish dengue, right? Um, and so I know that when my baby is born I'm not going to want to take her when she's a little baby because I don't want her to risk getting sick especially because like I said no medicine. And so I felt like I could just take the risk myself and be very safe about it too. When I posted that I was going to Cuba, a lot of you were saying to take lots of pictures and like to enjoy my time and all of that good stuff. But I honestly went on a strictly family business trip per se. <laughs> also, it's very hard to get your hands on gas in Cuba. So transportation is very expensive at the moment because they have to spend hours and hours at gas stations to be able to buy some gas. Anyways, I literally went to my mom's house from the airport and the only time I left my mom's house was to go to my aunt's house who lives just a few blocks away to have dinner there. Went back to my mom's house and then I stayed at my mom's house till it was time to go back to the airport to come back here. I definitely didn't want to risk getting sick, especially because since I'm pregnant, there's barely medicines I can even take myself. And so I'm back now and nothing happened. I feel good. <laughs> I was able to spend good quality time with my family, which made me very happy. And that is honestly what matters. Besides that, everything in Cuba is miserable and depressing. And it hurts my soul to see how people live their daily lives over there. The main reason I started talking about my trip to Cuba is because I wanted to make a point that I am using this month of January to get all of the traveling I had planned done. I had planned to go to Cuba to see my family even before I got pregnant. I know I don't want to do it once the baby is here, so I went at the beginning of January. And also this year, my husband and I wanted to go on vacation to Italy. We um, did not take any vacations last year at all. It's always been a dream of mine to travel to a ton of different places and Italy ranks high in the list of my places I want to go. So we are going to Italy. We leave January 16th, which is my birthday, and we're going to be there for three weeks. We already have our itinerary kind of planned. We did it all ourselves. We're flying to Venice. From Venice, we're going to Milan, we're going to Bologna afterwards, then we're going to Florence, from Florence to Napoli, from Napoli to Rome, and then from Rome, we come back home. And I cannot begin to tell you how excited I am about this trip. This is also going to be our baby moon type trip because it's the last place we're going before baby comes and I cannot wait, I'm super excited about it. I will probably be posting loads of Italy pictures and little videos and whatnot over on my Instagram account. Most things I see, I'll probably be uploading to my Instagram stories. I was thinking maybe I can do little reels telling you about my day abroad and whatnot. And if I do that, I'll also upload them to YouTube Shorts. Anyways, if you're not following me on Instagram yet, it's at Patty C. Alonso, so please follow me over there. But as far as beauty content is concerned, I only have four days before I leave to Italy. I am not going to be able to film a whole bunch of videos to post throughout these next three weeks, unfortunately. But 
a lot of things are changing in my life soon, so I'm not letting myself be too sad about it. I deserve a vacation. Um, last time I went on vacation, I worked throughout some of the vacation because I was uploading videos. And honestly, ever since I became pregnant, I have been trying to put a lot less pressure on myself when it comes to my work because there's just so many hours in the day and I not always felt my best. I, again, I've had a blessed pregnancy so far, but that does not mean that I felt 100% all the time, right? Plus, remember how I kept telling you during the fall that I was sick, that I had a cold? Well, I had a cold and I was pregnant and I couldn't take any medicine for my cold, which made my cold last for so long. I had that cold for like a month. It was horrible. And so that also kind of took a toll because I had a cold, I was pregnant. <laughs> the cold made me sneeze and cough and sneezing and coughing would trigger the gagging. It was like a whole thing. All right, I forgot I was doing my makeup. Let me go back to that. <laughs> Back to that Italy trip that I'm so excited about. I'll definitely be keeping you guys posted on my Instagram on where I am and what I'm doing and the yummy carbonaras I'm eating because I plan to eat a whole lot of carbonara in Italy <laughs> and all of that, but I unfortunately don't have time to pre-film a ton of videos to upload beauty content here on this channel while I am in Italy. So hopefully you guys forgive me for that. Hopefully you guys don't miss me too bad. I would definitely not have gone on two trips back to back. I would have planned this better if I wasn't pregnant. I would have given myself time to pre-film so that I have things to upload while I'm away and all of that. But um, I am pressured by time and by the fact that once this belly keeps growing, I'm not going to be able to travel anymore. And once baby is here, everything changes and I'm not going to be able to travel with her being teeny tiny or I could, but I probably won't want to do that. <laughs> and so because I have that time pressure of not being able to travel a few weeks from now, and I have to do it all now, <laughs> I just did not give myself enough time to plan things better. With that said, very excited about my baby girl. I'm very excited that I went to Cuba and saw my family, and I am very excited that I'm going to take time for myself and my husband in that we are going on um, one last trip, just the two of us, right? We're going to Italy for three weeks. And next time we go anywhere, we have to go with our baby girl. <laughs> now let's talk about what her name will be because I already had picked it out before I even knew it was a girl. We didn't have a boy name picked out, but we did have a girl name picked out and I'll explain why in a second. You guys know I was very close with my grandma. I uploaded videos with her to my YouTube channel, me doing her makeup, she doing my makeup and all of that. And my grandma was always my guardian angel. Oh my God, I still can't talk about her. Anyway, so I knew that if I had a baby girl, I would wanna honor my grandma in some way, right? My grandma's name was Evelina, which sounds absolutely beautiful in English. However, in Spanish, Evelina, sounds like an old lady name. Like I don't know anyone under the age of 80 who is named Evelina <laughs> in Spanish. It's just an old lady name and I didn't want to name my baby girl something that is seen as an old lady name in Cuba or in my Spanish culture or whatever. So her name will be Evelyn, <laughs> which is very similar to Evelina, but not exactly the same. I also wanted to make sure that it was something that was easily pronounced both in English and in Spanish. Evelyn is very easily pronounced both in English and in Spanish. And so that'll make things easier for all of her family and friends, right? <laughs> so baby Evelyn is coming this year. Also, I remember my grandma's color ID and she had set up her color ID to where the machine tells you to leave a message and all of that and it just says leave a message for and you say your name and instead of saying Evelina in her color ID she said Evelyn. <laughs> she had Americanized herself <laughs> and so Evelyn just seemed like the perfect way to honor my favorite lady. <laughs> I didn't always know I wanted to be a mom. I've never been one of those women whose like lifelong dream 
is to have children that has not been me and I feel like my grandma passing away was a huge turning point for me and um, my mentality changed when it comes to having kids her passing away definitely made me realize that this was something that I wanted for myself and so I talked about it with my husband and we were on the same page about it and also now is the time because I live with my in-laws and um, they help out a lot around the house, especially my mother-in-law and so I know that I will have amazing help um, once baby Evelyn comes. So it definitely feels like the right time all of the puzzle pieces um, came together um, for this to happen. <laughs> I'm very excited and also a little bit scared about this chapter in my life. I hope to do a good job as a mom. <laughs> I already know my husband is going to be an amazing dad. And I can't wait to read your guys' comments. I can't wait to read what you guys have to say down in the comment section below. I'm sorry I've been keeping a secret from you for quite a few months now. <laughs> I wanted to make sure everything was okay before I told you guys the big news. I did have my anatomy ultrasound yesterday and everything seems to be going well. So I wanted to make sure everything was going well before I told you guys as well. I have some ultrasound pictures to show you in a second. <laughs> they said that everything looked good, all of her little organs look good, her spine looks good. She was moving quite a bit when the ultrasound was happening. Every time I've gone to an ultrasound, she's been moving quite a bit, which makes me so excited. Ow, I keep getting asked if I feel her yet. And honestly, the answer is not much. But yesterday I found out why. My placenta is at the front. And so we have a big cushiony pillow before her and I. And so with having your placenta up front, you just don't feel the baby kicks as much because you have something kind of in the middle. And so they told me that throughout my whole pregnancy, I'm not going to feel her as much as other moms feel their babies because we have the placenta at the front. I put on mascara and I also did some lashes. All I'm missing is a lip liner and a gloss and then I'll show you these pictures right here in case you guys are interested. I don't know. <laughs> so this is Love Trap from Charlotte Tilbury and the Natasha gloss from the My Dream Natasha Denona collection. Anyways, let me show you our little bundle of joy right here. These are from her um, 20 week ultrasound yesterday. Let's see if the camera picks these up. Yep, that looks good. Look at her little cross legs right there. <laughs> and this little profile picture. She straightened her legs for this one. She had her knees to her head so they couldn't see the heart. That was the only organ they couldn't see in yesterday's ultrasound. So we have to go back for another one next month. These are her little feet. Another cute little profile picture. I was telling my husband she's got his pout because his lips are fuller than mine. <laughs> and um, she seems to have full lips. And then take a look right here at the last two. In this one you can see a little hand as well. She was moving a whole lot throughout the ultrasound which made it a bit extra fun, a bit more exciting. And I hadn't had an ultrasound since like two and a half months ago I think it was the last one so it had been a long time and I was very anxious to see her again so I was so excited to go back yesterday and of course thrilled that everything so far looks really really good. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this Let's Get Glam video. This is definitely the most special Let's Get Glam I have ever filmed. <laughs> I hope that you guys like this news. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I love you all so much. I'm so happy that you now know what's going on. <laughs> um, and I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye.